My name is Michelange Derisseau. I'm 27 years old. People call me Mickey. Um, I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. I am currently living in New York City, New York, um, specifically Manhattan. I came here for law school. Uh, my art is writing. Um, professionally, that takes the form of speech writing, ghost writing, or it has in the past at least, um, in terms of schoolwork that translates to memos and briefs and motions and complaints. Um, but in terms of my own self-actualization, my own, my own expression, um, that comes out as essays mainly, and a couple of novels that I have had on the back burner for far too long. And some poetry, but that's just what I'm trying to impress someone. Biggest project right now is a superhero novel. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're writing one of those, you have to step into the framework of the maybe 80 or 90 year history of the weight of that. Superman premieres in the 30s, Batman shortly thereafter, Captain America comes out right before World War II breaks out. We've seen sort of the popularity of comics ebb and flow, but, you know, we are now living, if not in the golden age, probably the platinum age. We are super saturated with superheroes everywhere we look. That's what we were describing as superhero movies. But they're not all the same genre. Mm -hmm. Like, Captain America is more of a spy thriller. Ant-Man is a heist movie. Wonder Woman and Thor are straight up fantasy. Mm. Um, like, the, these are under the umbrella of there's this person who puts on a costume and does things and they're, they're very cinematic and kablution wow, but the, 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 archety the archetypal framework they, they operate within um, transcends that, I think. One of the things that I kind of love about comics is that th they're so saturated into our culture that it's like a play. It's like a play box. It's like, it's almost in in the same way that you know Greek myths might have been, or mm -hmm. Robin Hood, or John mm -hmm. Henry, or, or any any tall legends. Like it's it's a framework where you can just step in, grab a couple pieces that people instantly recognize, and then mm. start tweaking them to sort of be able to take elements that people will recognize and homages and sort of have Easter eggs and in nods that people who know these things are like, oh yeah, that's, it's clearly inspired by blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then you also want to make them your own. And okay. it's also important because of the sort of the super saturation to sort of say, this is what doesn't work about this story. It's definitely been a case of looking to see what ideas have been done, looking to see what works with it, what doesn't, and then trying to see where the storytelling needs to go. Insofar as I am writing a black superhero. Mm -hmm. So my protagonist is black, and because every black superhero has electric powers, he also does. <laughs> um, Storm, Miles wow. Morales, it's, it's Black Lightning, Static, it's way too many. It's trying to interrogate this, this culture, uh, the whole great man idea that we're going to turn to in order to protect us from evil and put okay. the bad guys away. The story started, it was, it was, it was very cut and dry, you know, there was a, a, uh, you know, there was a love interest and a goofy best friend and a cop on the force and a rival and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, a black superhero is going to relate to the police a different way than Superman would. Yes. Yeah. Um, and... Black Superhero is going to have a different way of, you know, thinking about just put the bad guys in jail if he's growing up in a black neighborhood in Chicago. Yeah. Um, also wanted to interrogate. In comics, female characters in particular be sort of treated as accessories. Um, mm -hmm. some, are better, some are better than others, but mm -hmm. I think that they're kind of a prototypic, you know, you get the girl at the end. Mm -hmm. um, I want to interrogate some of the ways in which, you know, these stories condition boys and men like myself to think for all you know the self-alliance and perseverance and dedication sometimes that can have some toxic after effects mm -hmm. i mean there's an entire subreddit dedicated to the tragedy that is men writing women um <laughs> i started a story with a female protagonist who's a college basketball player basically She's she she's Steph Curry in college. She cannot miss. And then one day she starts missing. And then how does that traditional story of you know the athlete having the yips sort of intersect with the narrative we have about okay, you're good at sports, but you're good at sports for a girl. And mm -hmm. how that sort of like 
creeps back into the narrative of mm-hmm. how this someone, this person who's by any metric fantastic, all of a sudden not so good anymore. What this yes. person is like when they have this one thing they built their entire identity around, yeah. and then it's gone. A, a lot of that just, just just pulls from my own experiences. It pulls from sports stories and superhero stories that I've seen before, and a lot of it's just listening to the people around me, listening to comic creators, listening to you know. Mm-hmm other creatives listening to other athletes and other athletes as if I am one. I took a class about fiction that's specifically urban Mm -hmm. and I had originally set the city in some generic city like Metro City, Neon City, Comic City, whatever, like like all the comic books, a very idealized version of New York or a a, a very, a, a, a comically um, corrupt version of the city. Like, like, mm. like it's either, you know, oh, the city's packed with scumbags and, yeah. and, and the crime everywhere you go, or, you know, it's a shining city on a hill. A city can be both of those things when you just move from one neighborhood to another. Sorry, I'm like, you know, what if you set it in Chicago? Mm-hmm. Set this story in the world that you grew up in and what you know and see how that changes. And yeah. suddenly it was, because now it's not like, you know, there is this random building or, 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 or a, a random street that, you know, you can just sort of mess with, like SimCity hmm. or something. Now it's set within a world that you know, and when you're doing it in Chicago, Chicago is very different for different people based on who they are and where they are in it. Yeah. Um, once I made that decision to just say this story is a Chicago story, I think it sort of took on a life of its own. All, all these things that are window dressing for traditional superhero narratives kind yeah. of just came bursting into the floor. And they just end up, end up remixing the plot and the story in a way that I did not plan at the time. My junior year of high school, my English teacher, his name is Mr. Wright. His first assignment for us, I want you to write a how-to essay of how to succeed in school. Just a basic one or two page essay, type it up, bring it in next week, and we'll talk about it. The entire class does this, and he collects them. He doesn't read a single one, and he just says, okay, so let's talk about your essays. It's like, but you didn't read them. I'm like, okay, yeah, but I kind of know what's in them, right? Huh. Study, do your homework, go to sleep, pay attention to class, take notes. And like, we all wrote this, right? Did anybody say anything in their essay that none of the other 29 of you could have said. And then he said, so then there's no point to me reading these. And he threw them away in front of us. I was mad at the time. I was really angry at it. <laughs> I, I stayed up, I worked hard on that thing. He didn't even read it? Come on, man. Yeah. But the lesson stays stuck with what he, what he said. Like, write something that only you can write and write something that as much as possible no one's ever seen before. There's going to be bits and pieces of stuff we have seen before. We're all we're all consumers of the media landscape that's big and it's everywhere, and especially when you're operating within comics. There are things that you, you, you're probably just not going to be able to escape, but you can still put your own twist on it. If I know you and I read something you, should, you write, I should be able to tell that it's you just by reading it. Hmm. Like your voice and your personality should come across in your words. And like, if you don't use this word the way you you talk, don't write it. If you don't think this thing or you don't present yourself this way in your day-to-day life, don't write about it, write that. No no matter what it is you're doing, if it's a personal statement, if it's a short story, if it's an essay, like, like an honesty to who you are is paramount in in writing, I think. I think Tan Hesse Coates, for example, is probably the biggest influence right now in terms of sort of the cultural critic. I think um, Neil Gaiman has a way of with urban fantasy that really stays with me. Mm. A, a lot of the early creators of the DC animated universe, Rainbow Lowell is doing something with the Runaways that I think is emblematic of how of how to take characters that you know have been around for a while that you didn't create but put a spin on them that eventually makes them all your own. And the names are sort of flowing in and out. McDuffie, yeah. Simone, Gay, uh, Ross, like they're, they're, all, they're all flowing in and out. But mm-hmm. They all sort of come back to Mr. Wright. Um, yeah. And 
it, 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 it's, it's just that simple punch of, you know, if it's not something that people haven't seen before, mm-hmm. there's no reason for them to read it. And if it's not something that only you can write, mm-hmm. there's no reason to write. There, there, are, there are so many different aspects of identity that people can seize on and you sort of pick apart against you. Mm-hmm. And they can do that if there's a face to the name. But if all you do is write and they don't really know who you are, mm-hmm. until they know who you are, then all you are are just a combination of 26 letters mm-hmm. over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And if you get really good at it, you know, they can't say, oh, well, you're saying this because, you know, oh, who should listen to you because, oh, but like, if you got game, you got game. Mm-hmm. And for mm-hmm. me, part of what's driven me is seeing people who don't have game make it fairly far in this business. Or I can write a better book than that. I can write a better column than that. I can be more points than that. I can write a better speech than that. Like, you know what? I can do better than that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I've always written best um, alone, mm-hmm. at home, yeah. um, late at night, okay. little odd hours. Um, yeah. And like, that's, that's all quarantine has been. In terms of nuts and bolts, it hasn't really changed. In terms of mentality, in terms of tone, it's gotten a bit more, mm-hmm. but a bit more stripped away. When, you know, you go through sort of extended the collective shock that we're all still going through. Mm-hmm. I think it has to change a little bit. When I was working on the story this summer, I thought to myself, you know, if, if this is supposed to be set in more or less the real world, you're going to have to address the pandemic at some point. And then I said to myself, well, you know, if everyone's wearing masks, that's a great time to start a superhero career, isn't it? Other than that, I think it's just a matter of, you know, really focusing in both for myself and for my characters, like, given that it is a superhero story what is it what what is it really like when you know there is this threat that's just hanging over your life all the time all those threats that we see resolved in two hours or in 15 minutes every three three months or so at movies you know yeah we're kind of living through that all the time now a sense of isolation was always present in the stories spiraled out from my own sense of isolation as that is intensified for me when I work on the stories, they're coming from a much realer place because it's right. a place that hasn't really ended. Um, I don't know the next time I'll be able to go home. I don't know when I'll see some of my friends again. Right. Um, I don't know when I'll be able to like hug my parents or like say hi to my nieces and nephews. I find you, you fascinating as you know. Thank I you. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about your work and I'm so grateful that you talked about it today and your journey as a of writer. Thank you, Vic. Thanks for inviting me. It's always good to see you, Allie. You too, you too, man. All right, right. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye.